I mean, this the study that I have pointed to a lot of people to from 2014 indicates that my read is that for a female golden retriever, she should have an ovary sparing spay. There's such a higher incidence of cancer and the really deadly cancers in those who are spayed. So has there been anything that has contradicted that? No, there, there's no research I'm aware of that has contradicted that. And the the data has been so clear mm-hmm. that there's, in fact, the subsequent research that's come out has just served to clarify some of the why mm-hmm. that happens. And so it, it's just supporting it. I haven't seen anything for the negative. The, the negative pushback is once again changing dogma, changing culture. And there are certainly veterinarians that have concerns about doing these for other reasons that haven't been published, but they're better anecdotal. So that includes, for example, um, so if you have a female who's had an ovary sparing spay, as I said, she will still cycle. Mm-hmm. And she will still be receptive to males and males still will be attracted to her. And if you let them, they'll breed. Well, if she doesn't have a uterus, in fact, if she's only got half a cervix because you've cut everything else out and sutured it, you have to think about physically what's happening there and where's the sperm going. Because when a male and female dog mate, of course, they get a tie, they establish a tie. They're stuck together for 10, 15, sometimes more minutes that prostate fluid Mm -hmm. and the tie to push the sperm through the cervix into the uterus. So if you have a female that has had an ovary sparing spay and that cervix is a dead end now, it's been sutured closed and he's tied, where does it go? It has a hard time going backwards because the tie, the penis Mm -hmm. is blocking the way. It can't really go forwards because there's a blind end there. So something's got to give. If the volume is big enough, at some point, it's either got to leak around the penis or it's got to break through the scar tissue and get into the abdomen. And some veterinarians have reported that that's actually happened, Mm -hmm. that the scar tissue of the cervix is broken and the sperm has gotten into the abdomen of the female. And then it causes a raging peritonitis, Mm -hmm. which is uh, an emergency. Mm -hmm. Nobody's written up a case and published it. It's all anecdotal. And Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it hasn't happened. I'm just saying... It's people talking about it. People I trust have said they've seen it happen, Mm -hmm. but nobody's written it up. Nobody's published it. Nobody's really looked at it seriously enough to to get it documented. So if it does happen, it happens rarely. Mm -hmm. It's something that's eminently preventable. Right. So if we do, or I should say when we do an ovary sparing spay, we have a very serious conversation Mm -hmm. with the clients and we say, this is a at least it's a potential risk and Mm -hmm. one you should take seriously. So now that you've got this female that has ovaries and no uterus, a closed off cervix, you just need to be very careful about her being around intact males because it's not going to be obvious when she's Mm -hmm. in like it is when she's intact. You Mm -hmm. won't have bleeding. So you're very likely to miss, but the male dog is not going to miss it. So It's why it's the benefit of having a boy dog live with you because you know. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, Yeah. and and usually that'll tail, but... But what if you don't have a boy dog right. living with you, but then you go visit some people that yes. do and you're just unlucky enough Yes. that you, but, know, you haven't noticed it and then you're there and you're playing and you're not paying attention and now the, the male and female breed. So they just need to always be thinking yes. about if they don't have an intact male in their house, then this is probably a good option for them. But then they just need to think, we're going to go visit so-and-so, mm-hmm. we're going to go to a dog show, we're going to go to a dog park or whatever. Right, right. We just need to be very careful that we just don't allow this to happen. Right. Could I'm just curious um, if if somebody were s- suspicious that they that she was coming in season um, or not coming in season, but you know, what is typically yeah, well, called coming? Yes, in season? Okay, yes, yes. You could just go get a progesterone test too. That would tell you if if what you're suspecting is happening, right? Yes, and or a vaginal cytology. Both okay. of those things are going to change just like in an intact okay. female. Okay, that's good. That's the, good. The tool. progesterone still goes up. Okay. The, the vaginal cytology still changes just like an intact female. Okay. Yep. So you can absolutely check that. But that risk to me, this is so in my conversations with the puppies we're sending home is yes, this is a risk. The risk is osteosarcoma, right? It's, it's all the deadly cancers or maybe this event would happen. Right. 
this supposed risk, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm just mm -hmm. saying it's uncommon. It's manageable. It hasn't been actually documented versus things that are deadly that have been documented. Osteosarcoma, lymphosarcoma, mast cell tumors. Mm -hmm. They're all much higher in females that have been spayed, had their ovaries removed at any age for golden retrievers. For golden retrievers. For golden retrievers. Okay. So am I hearing you correctly that the ideal... So the, the ideal sterilization solution for a female is to, for a golden, is to do an ovary sparing spay. Yeah. Okay. That's, that is our recommendation. Okay. I mean, we have the conversation about intact yes. males, but really that's, that's the only risk. Um, so I'm hearing from you that the risks with an ovary sparing spay are a little higher risk of mammary cancer that you can detect. And a chance of a surgery that wasn't performed correctly um, in a stump pyometra and the chance that there would be a male present and there would be a breeding that could cause a serious infection. Right. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just, just, yeah, just repeat that, that, that the risks of an ovary sparing spay in a golden are a higher risk of mammary cancer by a little bit that's detectable with belly rubs mm -hmm. early and then usually curable at that stage when it's still early. So there's that. Um, the risk of a stump pyometra if the person who did the procedure left uterine tissue in. Mm -hmm. And yes, then the risk of, of being bred, which that risk is it's pretty low. Pretty low <laughs> and some would challenge that. 